In styles.css, we are going to be styling our memory game, game container and the memory card, front face and back face elements. So let's add a border to each one of them so we can better visualize them. Let's remove that temporary image width and let's add a 640 pixel width and height to our container. Let's also set display to flex. So what's going on here is that when we apply display flex to a container, we kind of get some other properties set for us by default. So what those properties tell our items is each one of you will take the same amount of space in the screen. And to the container it says your items should be laid out in a row and just one row and they're going to be positioned from left to right and they will be stretched out across the container's height. Our board has three rows, four cards each, so let's apply to the memory card a 25% width and a 33.33% height. Well, we can see that the height is being correctly applied, but the width is not. So, remember when I said that we had some default properties in the flex container? One of them is flex wrap, which is set to no wrap and is preventing the items from being laid out across multiple rows. So let's reset it to wrap. Now we have to position the front face and the back face on top of each other. So let's add a position absolute to them. And, uh, well, this is not what we wanted at all. So let's take a closer look here. When you add position absolute to an element, the element has to find out relative to what am I going to position myself. It doesn't know, so it asks its parent, in, uh, which in this case is box 3. So he goes, box 3, are you positioned? And uh, an element is only positioned to the screen if it has a position relative set. Box 3 does not have that, so it answers, no, I'm not positioned. The element then goes, okay, not a problem, I'm gonna ask your parent. Box 2, are you positioned? Box 2 is gonna go, no, I'm not positioned. Okay, I'll ask your parent. Box 1, are you positioned? Box 1 is gonna go, no, I'm not. Then the element says, since none of you is positioned, I'm gonna position myself relative to the body. And this is why right now the element is sitting at the top left corner. If we apply position relative to box 1, when the element asks, box 1, are you positioned? Box 1, box one is gonna go, yes, I am positioned. The element says, cool, then I'm going to position myself relative to you. And the same goes if we apply position relative to box 2 and 3. Which means that an element with position absolute positions itself relative to the nearest positioned ancestor. Back in our template, what's going on here is that since none of our elements are positioned to the screen, Front face and back face are positioning themselves relative to the body and we want them to be positioned relative to the memory card. So let's add a position relative to it. Let's make the images take the whole width and height of its container and let's also apply some padding, border radius and background color. Let's remove the borders and apply a 5 pixel margin to our memory card.
The layout has broken because the margin makes our cards overflow the available space. Okay, so on calculating our width and height, we have to take that margin under consideration. The CSS calc function allows us to subtract the margin value from the width and height. So let's apply that. For centering the memory game container, we're going to apply a display flex to the body and margin auto to the memory game, and that's going to center it vertically and horizontally. Let's add a click effect to the memory card. So the active pseudo class is going to be triggered whenever an element gets clicked. So we're going to apply a transform scale of 97% of its original size. Let's make that a bit smoother by applying a transition to it. And for that transition to work, we have to have a starting place. So let's apply trans transform scale 1 to the memory card. There's a typo here. And there you go.